subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV. Hello, lovely viewers. Welcome to Joy Learning R uh, on Joy Learning TV. I hope you are all doing well. I miss you just as you also miss me. Anyway, I hope you are glued to your TV sets with your notepads, mathematical sets, and others. Today, it's time for social studies. And our topic is adolescent reproductive health. Good. I know you are really ready. But before we start the lesson, our strand for today is family life for BS7. And the substrand is adolescence reproductive health. Good. In our previous lesson, we had indicators. So as we also have indicators in this lesson, let's look at the indicators on your screen. What we have there, after the learning, the substrand, viewers will be able to one, explain the concept adolescence. Explain the concept adolescence stress. Explain changes that adolescents go through, that is the physical, cognitive, social, and emotional. Again, discuss some challenges that the adolescents face. Good. Now, interesting topic today, isn't it? I know most of you are so anxious to learn with me as we go along the learning process. Now, let's look at some of the keywords or vocabulary for the topic on the screen. Right, so we have adolescence, we have adulthood, we have chastity, we have cognitive. That's dealing with the, the mind. Then we have emotional. And then we have another word, which is testosterone. Testosterone. And estrogen. Estrogen. And the last one is physical and social. Physical and social. Let me go through the words again with you. So we have adolescence. We have chastity. We have adulthood, we have cognitive, we have social, we have emotional, we have physical, we have testosterone, and oestrogen. Right, now, let's look at the concept of adolescence. Let's look at the concept adolescence. Adolescence may be explained as a process through which an individual makes a gradual transition from childhood to adulthood. Again, it is the process through which an individual makes the gradual transition from childhood to adulthood. This period lasts from the age 10 years, 10 years to 19 years. For example, some children or people in the primary school can be called adolescent. Even you at home can be called adolescent because you are in that age bracket. That is, if you find yourself between the age of 10 years to 19 years, then you are an adolescent. Now, I know you have a little brother or a little sister who is in the primary school, which is in this age bracket. So when the person is between the ages of 10 to 19, then the person is in that transition, right? Now, this is a, a picture on the screen. I hope you can all look at it very well. And then this depicts the transition. Can you see that? 
Good. So let's look at the first one. I'm sure you've seen a little boy of the age of eight. So this is a child. Then the next picture tells us of another boy who is also growing gradually from the eight years to 12 years. So from the 12 years to the last person, which is 19 years, is in that transition. So you can see certain physical changes in them because it's obvious. You can see it on the screen. Right. It's an interesting topic I told you today. I love this topic so much and I know you also love it because it tells us about, about our body. Are you okay with me? It tells us much about our body. Right. That's another picture on your screen again. So this one also depicts the transition of an adolescent, female adolescent, from the age of 10 years to 19 years. So let's look at the picture very well on your screen. So you can see that the female onset, it starts from 10 years to 12 years. So you can see breast grows, hip widens, pubic hair appears, uterus enlarges, and then menstruation begins. Good. I'm sure some of the girls are giggling at home. Yes, it's interesting, you know. Yes, because we are going to discuss about you, that boy there watching me right now, and then you, that little girl, in that transition, moving from 10 years to 19 years, also watching. But you know something? Put down these salient points as we go along. Right. So adolescent is the, it's a period that is divided into two, namely early adolescence, which falls between 10 years and 14 years, and then late adolescence between 15 years and 19 years. Well, so why do you fall? You can just look at it and put yourself, if you are in the early adolescence or you are in the late adolescence. Good. During this period, remarkable changes occur in the adolescent. So let's look at these remarkable changes. They are, they are, they are very, very important stages that everyone, especially you who is an adolescent watching me, should know. So we have the early adolescent, as I said earlier on. It is the period that physical growth and development, as well as emotional and mental changes, occur in the adolescent. And then the late adolescent is, is characterized by career choices, target setting, and engaging in relationship or friendship. These changes are grouped under the following. So let's look at how these changes are grouped. So they are grouped into the physical, the emotional, the psychological, and then the social, which prepares everyone or person into adulthood. These changes are described as characteristics of adolescence. Good. As I earlier said, today, it's a very interesting topic. And we are going to look at the physical changes in boys. Girls take a particular interest in this part. Because even though you are a girl, you should be able to know the physical changes in boys. You understand? So that if you see something wrong, or you see anything with a, a boy, you don't assume that this shouldn't happen. There's something wrong with it. You can even educate your parents at home that, Mommy, Daddy, this is a physical change in a boy, and it is normal. Right, so let's look at it. The first point is breaking of voice. Breaking of voice. Broadening of the chest. So you see, when the boy is in that transition, these are the physical changes the boy goes through. So we have the broadening of the chest and then we also have rapid or enlargement of the testes or the penis. Right. 
good i told her today uh, wow this topic is so nice so as a boy in that transition if you realize that you are not having some of these physical changes you need to tell your parents about it even though i know mommy will be observing daddy will be observing but you should also know that these are some of the characteristics that you as an adolescent in that transition should be able to detect on yourself right so we also have hair growth that is pubic hair have pubic hair, some, some in the armpits or in the groin, around the genital organ or even on the face. I'm sure most of you have started um, witnessing this around you and so you shouldn't be so worried about it. It is the characteristics of what? Adolescent boys. Now acquisition of excess energy, acquisition of excess energy and development of acne that is pimples all over the face so sometimes you see people some of the adolescents get so worried when they see pimples on the face they try to put certain medications and things leave it alone because it is part of what the transition after a particular time it will all vanish but then you need to keep it well too you should make sure that you wash your face all the time to remove the fats Oil, oil, oily surface for mates so that you feel very fine you understand good growth in height and weight which is called the good spots good spots now let's look at the fiscal changes during adolescence during adolescence several changes occur in the body of males and female you know that we just discussed the the, the ones of the characteristics of the of the male these physical changes are mostly caused by certain chemicals in the body called hormones for example the hormone in male is called the testosterone i told you earlier on testosterone which is secreted by the testes secreted by the testes whilst the female hormone is called the oestrogen oestrogen which is also secreted by the ovaries. I'm sure you are jotting down the points. I know you are happy. You are learning and you are understanding it. Right. Now let's pick the physical change in voice and explain a little. Now so breaking of voice. I'm sure most of you have brothers. At first, they used to, when they call your name, you used to hear it in a very soft tone. But as for some years, as he was gra graduating or gradually moving from one stage, you could hear that the voice has become big. So you can hear him when he's saying Linda, you can hear Linda because the voice is what has now become bigger. So looking at breaking of voice. The vo voice of boys become deeper and hoarse. This is one of the characteristics as we earlier on discussed. Then broadening of the chest. Broadening of the chest. The boy's chest and shoulders become broadened with some enlargement in their breasts. And then the next one is enlargement of testes and penis. Enlargement of testes and penis. The size of the penis and testes of the adolescent boy become bigger. It is the onset of the formation of sperm and the occasional emission of sperm at night called wet dreams. I'm sure most of you have experienced it at, at that particular transition. You shouldn't get scared. It's nothing at all. It's part of creation. So you should expect that these things will happen when you get to um, the physical changes in boys now development of akin pimples appears on the face of boys if these pimples are not hygienically treated large numbers okay and this is called the akin akin is a skin condition that occurs when hair follicles plug or clog with oil in and dead skin cells that prevents the face from what becoming as usual as you may not like 
But if you treat it very well, as per time passes, it will all fade away. Good. So, as we just discussed, what's the characteristics of adolescents in boys? Now, let's look at the characteristics of adolescents in girls or physical changes in girls. One, development of breasts. I have gone through that stage. I have passed through gradually through the 10 year to 19 years. So you see that if you have not gotten there, one day you will get there. Or maybe at the moment you are in that transition. So let's look at it. Development of breasts. So you can see I have gone through it. So I have the breast now. You see it. Appearance of growth of hair in the armpit. So when you get to a certain part, you can see that there's hair in the armpit. Widening or broadening of the hips. Widening or broadening of the hips. An appearance of pubic hair. Yes, that's also one of the physical changes or characteristics of adolescent girls. Then we have the growth spots. Growth spots. That's how, as you move along gradually, you see that some children grow, you see them becoming taller, some becoming fat. So that's a good spot. Onset of ovulation and menstruation. Acquisition of excess energy and development of the acne or pimples on the face. So you can see that there are some of the characteristics in the girls, the boys also have it. Yes, some of the characteristics in the um, in the girls, the boys also have it. So, for example, growth in hair, um, good spots, and then develop excess energy, and then development of acne or pimples on the face. They are all similar to the boys and the girls. Now, another picture on your screen. So you can see it. Yes, yeah, so you can see the girl which is 10 years old. What can you observe in the picture? Yes, you can see that breast grows, the breast grows, the hip widens, and then uh, pubic hair appears. You can see the pubic hair right there. And then the uterus enlarges. As for the uterus, when it enlarges, it's not seen. It's not obvious, yes, because it is in there. But it's as part of it. It enlarges. And then menstruation also begins between this time. Right. Now, let's look at the development of breasts. Between the ages of 8 and 13, girls start developing breasts. In fact, actually, it's not all every girl that starts from 8 years. But of late, majority of the girls start from 8 years. You understand. But... The world acceptable transition is 10 years. But of late, most some of the girls are able to start showing these physical changes from eight years. Which takes a particular form and shape. Sometimes the size of the breast and the time when it starts to grow also varies on an individual basis. I think I just explained that. Now, there's another picture on your screen. Let's observe it. What do you think it is? I'll be giving you assignments on this, some of the pictures. So observe it very well. So when it's time for question time, you'll be able to answer the questions that I will project on your screen as we go along. So there's a picture of the development of breasts. You can see the first one. There is nothing there. So as the person moves through the transition, you see that the breast is sprouting out a little, a little, a little, till 19. Then the breast comes out fully, right? So you can see that over here to down here is the same. The breast, there's no breast. It develops and it goes on like that gradually till the, the, the girl gets to 19 years. Good. Now let's look at the mental or cognitive development of adolescents. 
how the adolescent thinks, how the adolescent behaves cognitively with the mind. Now, adolescent develop mentally at puberty. Most adolescents at this stage think in more idealistic manner. For example, they talk about what they want to be in future. Like some of them, some of you, maybe say, I want to be a doctor. I want to be a lawyer. I want to be a journalist. I want to be a pastor. All kinds of what? Occupation that the, the adolescent at this time cognitively would like to be. This is because their perception about life is that everything is rosy and smooth. Good. So we talk about the emotional part too. Emotional development of adolescent. The emotional development of every adolescent involves how they relate at various levels. Their relationship emotionally, how they behave. I'm sure as I'm discussing this with you, you are beginning to know the way you think, the way you behave. So you can put yourself in the emotional part and see the way you are. You can put yourself in the cognitive part and see the way you behave. Right. Now, as we, 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 we discuss, we said that the emotional development of adolescents involves how they relate at various levels. What, what are some of the levels? Some are at home, the way they behave at home the way they behave at school, at church, the mosque, and even in the community, they find themselves. This influences the maturity or development of the individual. This development, however, is attributed to the socialization process. That's another wonderful picture on your screen. Another wonderful picture on your screen. Let's look at the picture. Let's look at it. Now, so you can see the first picture. I'm sure you are trying to guess. What is the young uh, adolescent doing? What is she doing? I, can't, I, I don't want to say it. I want you to try to guess. You are right. She's trying to do what? She's trying to think. She's thinking. You can see here, she's put the palm on the jaw and she's thinking. We actually don't know what she's thinking about. So that means that the adolescent always tries to think abstractly. They want to think. They want to know why certain things happen. And then look, if you look at the next picture right there, you can see that the adolescent is crying. It's crying. And then the last one. Hey, Hattie, go, girl. She's adolescent. is always happy. It's always happy. So this, you can see that the adolescent has swings. Today is sad. The next time is angry. The next time is crying. The next time she is laughing. You understand? So these are some of the emotions that the adolescent goes through. Now, remember the last discussion we talked about socialization in terms of what some of the the attributes or some of the things that adolescents go through so we look at the social how adolescents behave As socially it is the process through which a child receives information and customs that shape her or his being he is taught to conform to principles beliefs norms, pattern, and behavior accepted by the family or the society in general. Why do we say this? In a society, wherever you are brought up, the way they, the way they behave there is how you also take after. So in a home whereby the parents normally use such vulgar language, you see the little child also using the same is because it's she's trying to socialize she knows that it is right and she's doing it it's the same way if the child is taught the right thing how to say thank you i'm sorry the child will be able to say these things when he goes out into larger society now let's look at some of the emotional and mental or 
psychological characteristics of the adolescents. One, they are very adventurous. Many adolescents are very curious about things around them. I'm sure you know that. You've been doing that. You are very curious. You want to know why um, there's hair in someone's armpit. Why is it that? Yes. Why is it that this person has become this and this person has not become that? So that's the... Well, that's how the adolescent is. The adolescent is very curious. He always wants to know what is over there and always wants answers to his or her questions. So many adolescents are very curious, as I've earlier said. They, are, they, are always, they always demand answers and information about many things at the same time. I know you do that a lot. Today you are very excited because I'm just hitting on the things you, the adolescent watching me, used to do wherever you find yourself. Two, the experience mood change, or this is called mood swings. Mood swings. Sometimes, you see, when you get to the classroom, there's a friend who is sometimes happy the next time, doesn't want to talk. When you call her, oh, Belinda, you say, today I don't want to talk to you. You see, so these are mood swings. Accept them like that. After some time, Belinda will be fine, and then will start chatting with you. That's, these are the physical changes or the emotional part of what? Adolescents. Now, most adolescents undergo mood changes or mood swings. Sometimes they become very happy or quickly get angry or sad over minor issues and comments. They change, they, these changes in mood are caused by hormonal changes in their blood. That is the oestrogen, the oestrogen and the testosterone. So you can see that the oestrogen and the testosterone have a very duty, big duty to, to do in the body. When you, it's not active, you can see that it wouldn't work well, uh, you, you, you will not function properly. But I will leave that one for the science teacher to come and explain more to you. But with this, I know that the oestrogen uh, and the, the testosterone level in girls and boys do what? They, are, they, are also, they also propagate the hormonal changes in the males and the females. Three, love and care. Wow. Some of you, when you hear love, they, they cover their face. It's part of the adolescent, you know. So we are looking at love and care. Every adolescent needs love, care, a sense of common belonging, uh, friendship and relationship relationship especially with opposite sex i remember those days when we were in school when you go and pick someone's eraser then they'll say hey, you to take stanley's eraser and then they start funny funny things but adolescents um actually want to do things they want to to they want attention they want you to care for them they want a uh, mommy to love them they want grandma to love them when an adolescent is shunned he becomes then he goes into a corner and tells the world that nobody loves me. No, that's not what we want. We want from today, we should know that the adolescent also wants love and care. Right? Every adolescent needs love and care as a sense of common belonging, friendship, relationship, especially with the opposite sex. Girl, boy relations is very high during adolescence. So when he gets to adolescence, Oh, oh la la. <laughs> the girl always wants to be with the boys, and the boys also wants to be with the girls. So sometimes, parents, we have to understand um, our children when they get to this time, and then we guide them. We need to guide them. Even you, as an adolescent right now, can also guide your friend, adolescent. That, that oh, it is true that during this stage, we, we, we need love and care, but we should do it with what? Caution. Now, let's look at more examples. Girls at this stage associate more with boys and the vice versa. We normally used to hear them say, he's, he, he's my boyfriend. Yes, used to hear some of them say, he's my boyfriend. I really love him. Or, I love her more than everything. Or sometimes, you even see that when you have a, friend, a male friend and somebody comes closer to their friend, adolescent is angry, you understand? Understand the adolescent. It's a stage. It's a transition. After some time, the adolescent will not do that again because it's a stage. It's because he also wants to be what? Very curious. 
Four, shyness. Is that true? Do you experience it? Yes, you do. Shyness is part of the characteristics. So let's look at it. Most adolescents become too shy, even around their parents because of the secondary sexual characteristics. Now, the breasts, the enlargement of the penis, and others. Let me tell you a little story here. Interesting. When I was young and I was growing up, um, I was doing my adolescent days. And my daddy came to my bedroom and I was like, but um, I was had finished bathing, I was dressing up. And my daddy just opened it and I said, Ah, daddy, please close the door. Close the door. And my daddy said, Ah, well, look at you. Yes, do you know why? It was because I was shy. I was shy. I was, I didn't know why I was doing that. But today, I know that it was because of what? One of the attributes of what? The adolescent. Shyness. You understand? Shyness. But parents, we need to advise our children. Counselors, we need to guide and counsel the adolescents. That these are all stages and with time they will pass by. Good. So most ad adolescents become too shy even around their parents because of their secondary characteristics. That is, they cover up their chest and buttocks and when close relations intrude in their privacy, their private life, you understand, right? I'm sure you are putting down the points, putting down the points. I, I wouldn't love to end this lesson, but I know you are enjoying it. And another time I'll come again with another part of it, right? The fifth point is worry or fear, worry or fear. The, um, then we have enjoyment and entertainment. Yes, you know, adolescent life entertainment. When you go to some of the schools and they are having their open day or fun day, hey, adolescent is so active, enjoying. I remember I went to Christ the King International School and they were having an open day. Wow, come and see these adolescent girls and boys all over enjoying themselves. It's part of them, they like enjoyment and entertainment a little but guide them then they love as we said earlier on they love and then they also easily get irritated when you are not careful and you tell an adolescent use a word maybe you just try wanted to be um funny a little that adolescent will take offense take offense so these are some of the the attributes of adolescent now let's look at adolescent stress that that Adolescents also go through stress. Yes, they go through, through stress. Let's look at some of it. Adolescent stress. Adolescent stress may be explained as the act of feeling of tension, worry, frustration, sadness, withdrawal that commonly lasts from a short period of time. Why are we saying this? So that sometimes mommy will tell you that you are not going to this party. Then the adolescent is down, doesn't understand why mommy is saying that. Mommy should rather explain to the adolescent, no, I don't want you to go here because A, B, C. But maybe mommy will not say then just say, you are not going. When he does that, then the adolescent becomes worried, frustrated. Ah, why is mommy saying I shouldn't go to this party? All my friends are going and all the time mommy doesn't want me to go. Mommy knows why. So when it happens like that, the adolescent goes through stress right now so let's look at some of the sources of adolescent stress adolescent stress so some of the sources of adolescent stress or problems are as follows one family financial problems yes yes it's one of them negative thoughts and feelings about themselves some people sometimes think that they have a big nose so because of that they keep their attention focused on that and as we've just said it's a gradual process it's a gradual transition it will get away with time so you shouldn't be so worried about you having acne pimples on your face or you have a thick lips or something it's adolescent it will wither away with time now changes in their body yes some adolescents when they are in adolescent they become fat so they get worried why am i too fat why is my leg so thin no, it's a stage. It will just pass like that. Problems with friends. You know that in the classroom. And um, Cassandra said this, and this one said that. And so I'm not 
talk to her. All these things are some of the sources of adolescence stress. Don't stress yourself because you are a student. If you stress yourself, you will not be able to learn. You know that, right? Then separation and divorce of parents also stresses up adolescents. Then chronic illness or severe problems in the family also stresses the adolescent. Now, the death of a loved one. Adolescents may not speak when he missed or lost a loved one. We may be thinking about it. Also stresses the adolescent. Changing of school. Changing of school. Maybe for some time, mommy or daddy has not got enough money and will decide that you are not going to your school again. But mommy, they should explain to the adolescent that because of A, B, C, I have to take you from here. Or the distance from the, the, the house to school is far. So that's why we are relocating you to another school. But if you don't do that, you stress the adolescent. Good. Taking on too many activities or having too high expectations also stresses the adolescent. If you have a friend who is wearing a new shoe, you shouldn't force yourself to also get it. If you do that, you stress yourself. And then lastly, unsafe living environment. Unsafe living environment. Now let's look at uh, suggested ways of decreasing distress among the adolescents. How can we decrease the stress among you, the adolescents, watching or listening to me right now? Some of the suggested ways to decrease stress among the adolescents are as follows. The adolescent must exercise and eat regularly. They should not take in too much caffeine, which can increase feelings of anxiety. So caffeine, you know that. There's a lot of caffeine in so many products that we have. I can't mention any brand for now. But that you know, it. so when you buy something, you need to read it and see whether there's caffeine in it. If there's ca caffeine, then you have to desist from taking it because it is not good for you. They should learn to speak politely. Learn to speak like the adolescent, learn to speak politely. They should not use illegal drugs, alcohol, and tobacco. They should also build network with good friends who help them in terms of needs. So steady mates, group discussion, and others. Right. This is a time I enjoy most because I have finished delivering all that I want to discuss with you. It's assignment time. So quickly, I know you have jotted down some of the salient points already. So we'll just have a recapitulation of all that we have discussed. So let's look at the assignments. Should I open or I shouldn't? Yeah, somebody is saying open because we are ready to answer. So let's see. Wow. Assessment discussion. For our first question, what is adolescent stress? What is adolescent stress? So, and then the second question is, list four sources of stress in adolescents. List four sources. I'm sure you just jotted them down right now because we just ended that. So let's see. Write the answers down before I give you my answers. So I'll give you two minutes for you to do that. So you're writing. What is adolescent stress? So it is blah, 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 blah. Yes, you are right. You are writing. I, I know you are getting it right. So the second question is, list four sources of stress in adolescents. Four sources of stress in adolescents. Right. Time is up. So let's see. Good. Answers to the question. So question number one. Yes. Adolescent stress may be explained as the act of feeling of tension, worry, frustration, sadness, and withdrawal that commonly lasts from a short period of time. So I know most of you behave like that. You get angry, the next time you're happy again. You remember the picture we saw. So these are some of the um, stress that an adolescent goes through. The next time he's moody, sitting alone, 
doesn't want to talk to anybody. The next time he's happy, the next time he's crying, it's a stage and it will fade with time. Now let's look at the answer to question number two. So one is family financial problems. Family financial problems. Sometimes you think that you, the adolescent, does not care because you can't tell anybody his or her problem. You understand? So when parents are going through uh, financial challenges or problems, the adolescent also thinks. Yes, he thinks about it. Why is my mommy's work now not going on? But he doesn't have anything to do. So he goes through that uh, stage. The negative, negative thoughts and feelings about themselves. Then changes in their bodies. And then problems with friends. Separation or divorce also is part of it. And then chronic illness or severe problems in the family. Now, so this is the assignment time. This is the time that I will give you an assignment. And then you send it to Joy Learning TV on YouTube for me to assess, mark, and then send it back to you. So let's look at it. Good. Today, the assignment is very simple, isn't it? So let's look at the first one. Explain the concept adolescence. Explain the concept adolescence. Question number two, state four characteristics of adolescence in boys and then in girls. So that question is going to be eight, four boys and then four for girls. Then mention three emotional and psychological changes in the adolescence. So write the question down quickly, quickly, quickly. I know you are done. The clock is ticking, ticking for me to end my lesson. So one, two, three, four. Then it's a bye-bye for me, your facilitator for social studies, BS7, Anita Ochri Asari. Keep learning social studies all the time. It's a bye-bye. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV.